Does the world need Superman anymore? That's the question pondered in Superman Returns. This update, directed by Brian Singer, hot off the two X-Men movies, picks up more or less where the Christopher Reeve Superman movies left off. Superman, played by newcomer Brandon Routh, has been away from Earth for five years, brooding on a fragment of his destroyed home planet Krypton and communing with the spirit of his dead father. Returning to Metropolis, disguised as mild-mannered reporter Clark Kent, he finds his old flame, reporter Lois Lane, Kate Bosworth, not only has a son and a fiance, James Marsden, she's just won a Pulitzer Prize for her essay, Why the World Doesn't Need Superman. Obviously, she's a woman with issues over the way the Man of Steel just disappeared from her life. But it turns out that the world does need Superman, and not only to save falling airplanes and stop runaway cars. When villain Lex Luthor, Kevin Spacey, launches a diabolical plot to build himself a new continent out of alien rock crystals that multiply like amoebas, causing ruin and destruction all around. If your father was alive, he never would have let you go. I almost gave up hope. I, I just thought I would never see you again. Oh, Clark. Did you find what you were looking for? I saw it, hoped it might still be there. You're home. That place was a graveyard. But I'm all that's left. Clark, the universe is a big place. And you don't know who's out there. And even if you are the last, You're not alone. I know. Well, you know, Rich, last time you and, and Morton were talking about inspirational movies mm -hmm. that are coming out right now. Yeah. And I have to think there are moments in Superman where I, I sort of was thinking of it as the passion of the Clark. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have a lot of the crucifixion pose. Superman is flying. And sometimes he doesn't just fly straight on. He kind of flies like this. And he right. floats. And he's got the whole thing. And he's the son sent down by the all-powerful father to save mankind. Oh, yeah, they're very conscious of it. And you know, that I actually liked that about this movie. I mean, that, <laughs> that, those were the parts that actually worked better for me. Uh, the fact that, you know, the, the, it was sort of like one of the X-Men mutants, you know, mm -hmm. he's, 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 he's among the people, but he's not actually one of them. He's an alien race, and he right. feels his alienness. He feels his pain, um, and it's tough for him. Um, that, was, that, was, that was the part I liked. Yeah, no, um, we'll, we'll get to the part you didn't like in a second. <laughs> I mean, I, I, no, this is something that they've been kind of, it was implicit in a lot of comics, especially stuff by Alex Ross. His, uh, his comics imagery is, I think, really a source for this in a big way. Um, and now they made it explicit in this film. And I think to middling effect, because um, once, once you decide he's the Messiah, it makes him hard to be a man again. Mm -hmm. And uh, this intermediate stage between God and man, which I guess any of these guys, whether their names are Jesus or Krishna or, or, or Clark Kent, yeah. um, it's it's kind of a fr it, there's beautiful sequences in it mm -hmm. stuff that I just loved mm -hmm. um, and at the same time I think uh, looking at the whole it, it made it, it's hard for me to go back for seconds after yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because because there's just so there's so much like so much lard on this thing I think that's true and it's cer certainly true of Pirates of the Caribbean too the yeah. same thing it's summer blockbuster movie time and like Pirates of the Caribbean I think it's just you, you're conscious of watching this going okay this is all lead up to the sequel yeah you yeah know? right I mean, both both of these blockbusters are the same yeah. in that respect it's just like it's they're going to develop this stuff more in the sequel yeah. Now, Lois Lane, Kate, what did you think of Kate Bosworth? Um, she was no Margot Kidder. I remember Margot no. Kidder gave her a real personality. The, the character as written is not much. I don't think Kate Bosworth is bad. She just didn't have much to do. And the character just didn't work for me. So I didn't think she was worth all this trouble that poor Superman goes through. <laughs> I didn't either. Uh, I, yeah, you know, you and that's, to... a, that's a problem with the movie, if you don't really feel that there's any connection. No, there's, a, there, there's like this complete disconnection. You don't really yeah. get the idea of why they separated in the first place. There was yeah. no good, there's no good writing on that. They needed some explanation of yeah. that. Um, Bosworth is a callow actress. There's not really much there. She's a great, she's a good damsel in distress, but 
as far as being the, the kind of lowest lane that used to really just like kick a lot of butt and take orders and, right, and, right. and, and take names rather. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's just that's, that's beyond just, her. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, her thing. And, and so that's that's a that's a yeah. pity. There's just not that chemistry going on between them. One thing I did like about this movie was the reference to the monolith monsters, which is this great <laughs> science fiction movie of the 50s, an homage because oh, the crystals are bursting up out of the out of the ground and destroying everything in their path. I mean, when water hits them, that's the monolith monsters. It's the whole plot of this movie. <laughs> Uh, so I did, there was a scene where the people are fleeing from the crystals rising up out of the ground, which is exactly I, I the poster that. of the monolith monsters. Maybe you could fight like Kronos, you know, the big cube in the next one. Yeah. <laughs>